I want to highlight a moment where J.D. Vance was confronted about his vague response during a recent debate. He avoided directly answering whether Trump won or lost the 2020 election, which is a straightforward question that goes to the heart of our democratic process. On stage, he sidestepped the issue, and it was noticeable. The team at The Good Liars decided to follow up with him, and the exchange became quite tense. Before I show you the clip, I want to set the stage. A video of Marjorie Taylor Greene was also released, in which she calls for Jack Smith to be prosecuted and jailed. Take a look. Uh, regime, which is what they have done the entire time, Natalie. Uh, what Jack Smith is doing is completely illegal, and he should be prosecuted. After we win on November 5th, Jack Smith should be prosecuted. Um, I'll go further. Matthew Graves. Matthew Graves, the U.S. attorney that continues to prosecute January 6th defendants, election protesters on January 6th, Matthew Graves should be prosecuted. Uh, this, is a, this is a weaponized abuse of power, and shame on Republicans in Congress for never... Nothing would be more satisfying than seeing Marjorie Taylor Greene lose her seat in a landslide someday. If you agree, feel free to leave a like or share your thoughts. Marjorie's frustration seems to stem from the fact that Jack Smith presented evidence which came from Trump's own closest allies, people like Mark Meadows and Sidney Powell. They gave Jack Smith the information he needed for the indictment against Trump. One of Trump's campaign staffers, who was on Marine Force One, reportedly overheard Trump telling Melania, Ivanka, and Jared Kushner that even if he lost, he should claim victory. It seems like a clear case, and Marjorie Taylor Greene is upset. Ironically, her response to the so-called weaponizing of the justice system is to suggest further weaponizing it. To understand why J.D. Vance can't acknowledge Trump's 2020 loss, it helps to watch Trump continue to double down on his election claims. Last time, last election, we did great in 2016. A lot of people don't know we did much better in 2020. We won. We won. We did win. It was a rigged election. It was a rigged election. You have to tell Kamala Harris, that's why I'm doing it again. If I thought I lost, I wouldn't be doing this again. You know where I'd be right now? In the beaches of Monte Carlo, maybe, or someplace. A reply from someone named Jojo in the comments said, Trump knows he lost, Jack Smith knows he lost, and he's going to lose again and go to prison. We now have clear evidence that Trump knew he lost the election, and Jack Smith's updated indictment only strengthens that point. After the mail-in ballots came in, Everyone around Trump told him there was no fraud, so he fired them and turned to people like Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, and Mike Lindell, who have little grounding in reality. It's not just sad, it's interesting to see J.D. Vance get pulled into this. People get upset when I say this, but I believe J.D. Vance is an intelligent person who's simply taking advantage of the situation. While he may not be a genius, he's well-spoken and knows what he's doing. A decade ago, he was more centrist, pro-trans rights, pro-immigration. Now, he's grasping for power and finding himself in awkward positions. Watch as Jason Selvig from The Good Liars confronts him on whether Trump lost the debate, and you can see someone from J.D. Vance's campaign team trying to push Jason away, but he doesn't back down. If, who, who won the 2020 election? Could you just answer, did, did Donald Trump win yes or no? Yes. He did win? Yep. So will you, will you concede, will you concede, if your opponent gets, your opponent gets more votes, will you concede? I really feel bad for you, man. I, I, I just want to know, if, you're, if your opponent gets more votes, will you concede? It's interesting that J.D. Vance responded with, I really feel bad for you, man, as a way to deflect. But then he went further and said that, yes, Trump won the 2020 election, which raises serious concerns. How can someone in a position of power not understand the basics of our electoral system? He doesn't seem to grasp the rules or the processes, and he doesn't even know who won the last election. As Lawrence O'Donnell pointed out, this may be the first VP candidate who doesn't know the result of the previous election. It's especially troubling when you consider that Donald Trump lost 60 court cases challenging the election and then attempted to overturn the results through questionable means. Jack Smith's indictment details Trump's increasingly desperate attempts to overturn the legitimate election results in seven states, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. 
Trump's efforts included misleading state officials to ignore actual vote counts, manufacturing fraudulent electoral votes, and pressuring Mike Pence to obstruct the certification of the election. When all else failed, Trump directed a crowd of supporters to the Capitol on January 6th to disrupt Congress's certification. These actions were all part of a larger pattern of deceit. Now, J.D. Vance is contributing to that same web of disinformation, while Trump continues spreading false claims at his rally in Michigan today. I want to see how sick and distorted Kamala Harris's priorities are. Just consider FEMA. F-E-M-A. You know what that is, right? The Federal Emergency Management Agency. And you read about now all the time because there's nobody that's handled a hurricane or storm worse than what they're doing right now. Kamala spent all her FEMA money, billions of dollars, on housing for illegal migrants, many of whom should not be in our country. In a reply, someone said, his lies reek of desperation and panic. You don't even have to be near him to sense it. He's sinking deeper into his own chaotic and dysfunctional world every day. That statement rings true. What kind of leader spreads distrust and fear during a natural disaster instead of offering help? Multiple states, Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida, are facing crises. Yet, instead of focusing on supporting those affected, Donald Trump chooses to stir division, claiming that Vice President Harris and FEMA don't want to help. It's reminiscent of the concept of learned helplessness, where after repeated mistreatment, an animal eventually just gives up. That's what Trump tries to do to the American people, but we won't let it happen. This is another instance of Trump misleading people, delivering a strange rant while his audience seems unsure of what's happening. Before we get into the clip, take a look at this. The Kid's Guide to President Trump has a new edition. The Kid's Guide to the Courage of President Trump. It shows Trump with his fist raised, standing next to Abraham Lincoln. It's an outrageous piece of propaganda, as if comparing Trump to great American leaders like Lincoln and Washington. The reality is, Trump doesn't even understand the basics of how our democratic processes work and actively tried to undermine them. Our Watch cars, the we're going to have hybrids. We might someday have hydrogen. Did you ever hear of hydrogen? That's the new thing. <laughs> they have hydrogen. Did you ever hear of hydrogen? That's the new thing. That's the new hot thing. No, hydrogen's the hottest thing going. It's too hot. You know what happens? When there's a problem, it's bad. The car blows up, and they, you're not even recognizable when this happens. It's like, it's one problem. Uh, when a car goes bad and when it blows up, the person driving the car is not recognizable. So I think I'm going to pass on that particular car if that's it. I'm honestly not sure what he's talking about here. But if you enjoyed the video and appreciate what I do, feel free to give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Also, double check that you're still subscribed. Sometimes people get unsubscribed. Have a great rest of your day and take care.